Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, mysterious voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today, it is Poetry Thursday, uh, so I wanted to talk about some neat poetry that uh, has attracted my eye. Uh, And it is also Black History Month, so once again, I am talking about a Black poet, uh, highlighting um, a Black writer in some form or way, whether it be an American writer or um, a Black writer from overseas uh, that that I've managed to, to find and want to talk about. And so today's poem is all about struggle and class differences or class unity. I am referring to Childhood by Margaret Walker. For those who don't know, Margaret Walker is an American author uh, who lived throughout the 1900s. Uh, She was from the Chicago uh, Black Renaissance School, so quite a little bit different from the Harlem Renaissance, although it does seem like there was some uh, similarities in the ideas that they were writing about. Uh, She wrote um, mostly about the Black experience, both in the past and the present. uh, specifically focusing on her, uh, her, her, on the uh, sort of southern lived experience that that, that seems to pop up um, uh, a lot in her writings. Uh, the idea of southern pride, uh, and in one poem, she even notes that like th- that she's very proud to be a southerner, but hates that the Klan has sort of co-opted that identity and used it for nefarious means. Uh, which I, th- I I was going to talk about that poem, but um, the one I t- what I'm talking about today was a little bit more. Um, eye-catching for me, at least. Uh, She's written at least one book um, called Jubilee, which is about a um, uh, like a a slave in in the South uh, during the time of slavery. Uh, I haven't read it, but I would be very interested in checking it out based on her poetry that I've encountered. Uh, So yeah, um, someone who is a very interesting and very, um, seems to be a very important person to the um, uh, well, the Chicago movement, but also in terms of black writers in the in the 1900s, that might be worth uh, checking out. So, without further ado, let's talk about this poem. I will uh, read it, do a little bit of analysis, and then we'll move on from there. Childhood. When I was a child, I knew red miners dressed raggedly and wearing carbide lamps. I saw them come down red hills to their camps, dyed with red dust from old Ishkuta mines. Night after night, I met them on the roads, or on the streets in town I caught their glance. The swing of dinner buckets in their hands, and grumbling undermining all their words. I also lived in low cotton country, where moonlight hovered over ripe haystacks, or stumps of trees, and croppers rotting shacks with famine, terror, flood, and plague nearby, where sentiment and hatred still held sway, and only bitter land was washed away. And so that was Childhood by Margaret Walker, a pretty short, short poem, but one that I think expresses some large, um, large ideas that are still talked about to this day. Um, in terms of narrative of this poem, the, uh, the, the narrator of the poem is talking about uh, their childhood, noting the miners that, that lived nearby them and how they, um, they came down uh, hungry from the mines and also, uh, you know, covered in dust. And so not an easy job. And then they also talk about where they lived in low cotton country, presumably in the south. Uh, they talk about ro- uh, croppers rotting shack, uh, and the famine and the terror that they dealt with, presumably by the hate groups like the KKK and the 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 lynchers who lived nearby who would use any and all opportunities to to terrorize um terrorize black folks in order to get them to either vote a certain way or to keep them subjugated uh and they they say like hatred still held sway and only bitter land was washed away which is a very interesting uh set of lines there uh but you can see um Margaret Walker, in the, or the narrator in this poem, talking about uh, the sort of hardships that these groups have had to endure. The red miners, like they came, uh, they came down from the hills, died with red dust. 
and that can't be good. <laughs> like they're surely absorbing these hazardous materials, and to come home with it is is going to drag it into the house. So if it's if it's not good to work in those mines, which it often wasn't, it's certainly not good to live with the remnants all around you. And you and you know they're grumbling, um, undermining all their words. They're not very happy with their jobs and the swing of their dinner buckets. They probably haven't had a lot to eat. So it's clearly hard for the miners. And as I was saying before, it's also hard for those who live in low cotton country um, during a time when um, racism and uh, uh, like basically a genocide against black individuals is, what was running rampant uh, like they have these croppers rotting shack not given like the sharecroppers not given a, a great place to stay and dealing with famine and flood and and all kinds of terrible things that are um, that are going on in, in the south at the time this was written and still go on to this day although not as well publicized and um, like you, you can see the hardship that uh, Margaret Walker is talking about here. But more so than that, there's a bigger underlying theme that Margaret Walker is talking about that I'm sure, you know, those who read this can, can kind of grasp at. She's making a comparison between these two situations, showing that the miners, who were probably mostly white individuals, given that this might have existed in a time of Jim Crow, we're dealing with a lot of hardships, uh, especially lower class white individuals, and comparing it to those of black individuals who were dealing with a lot of hardships, maybe, maybe not the same hardship, but a very similar line of thinking, and showing that there's a lot of similarities between these two groups. And the only thing uh, that wasn't connecting them really is, is, is race, another social illusion. Uh, so what Margaret Walker is getting at is that these two groups are kind of aligned in what they might be expecting out of their politicians, out of society, like in terms of getting better pay, like the, the, uh, like essentially these two groups can work together, whereas so often politicians have divided these individuals based on, on lines of race, saying, oh, you might have it bad, but you certainly don't want to have it as bad as these black individuals, and that's why you should vote with for me, because I will keep this, this system of oppression in place. But that only goes so far, because eventually these people are going to see that you're not voting in their interest, that you're keeping it much um, the same as the status quo. And eventually, these people will either vote for the party that unifies the, uh, these two groups, or they'll vote for the party that tr uh, that uh, ha basically puts forward a populist candidate, say like a Donald Trump type, who probably won't improve their situation, but uh, will certainly uh, focus all their hate on the groups that they don't like. Um, which is probably going on a long rant that Margaret Walker didn't intend. But the main point here is that these two groups have more in common than they do... Um that they do against one another. So it's in their best interest to work together, often against the, the oppressor who is the rich, wealthy individual who is, is exploiting both of these groups in order to um, obtain uh, some, uh, some profit of some sort. Uh, and often keeps wages low for these other groups. So working together and unionizing and and uh, joining together in the class struggle is often better than focusing on these other these differences such as race, because that is what the politicians are using to divide and conquer people uh, that they could that could otherwise join together and and create this better society. And I, I think that's what Margaret Walker is really getting at there. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Childhood by Margaret Walker, a seemingly innocent poem about, you know, noting, uh, noting, um, you know, what she sees in her childhood. Uh, but when you take it apart, it, it, it becomes obviously, a, you know, a call for class unity and, and whatnot, and noting how um, the groups that we often think are completely different might have more similarities than most. So a lot worth thinking about there. Uh, if you catch anything else in this poem, you know, let me know in the comments below. I'll put a link to it in the description so you can read it and uh, you know conversate with me or other people if you want to. Otherwise don't forget to like share and subscribe so that more people can find out about this poem or this poet or poetry Thursday if they want to start you know reading or talking about poetry in, in, in their uh, own circles. And until then I wish you the best of luck in your weird and class unity travels. Farewell.